Now, I use the words deliberate acquisition because it carries the connotation of consciously and intentionally obtaining the product, and not necessarily with currency. If, for instance, I did some gardening for someone on the assumption that they'll cook me fish and chips as payment, or at least part of the payment, then make no mistake about it. I, I wouldn't would even deliberately acquiring. I'm like fish. thinking about this now. I, I don't even think that like putting deliberate there is well one is needed but two i don't think it somehow like alleviates one from like it might like justify as to why you you don't um or why you do like contribute to like some type of suffering because you're just not aware right like it's unintentional mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the fact that like something is unintentional still doesn't take away from the fact that like it could still be wrong right because like i can yeah. unintentionally do something that ought not happen yeah. if we take if we take um right or wrong good or bad to be like um like action guiding like like language meaning mm -hmm. it ought something ought happen or ought not happen just because i don't do something deliberately doesn't mean that consequence or that action in and of itself ought not happen yeah meat eaters right? can make the, the argument that when they buy meat they're not intending to uh kill an animal exactly they're intending to, to buy meat and then yeah we still it acknowledge that it's wrong to, yeah mm -hmm. and it doesn't it doesn't entail that like now it's like permissible right it's not right. more it's, it's still wrong to do it right mm -hmm. you're just offering some sort of like explanation as to why the behavior is occurring in the first place mm -hmm. but like well it's currently formulated like if you if you actually somehow didn't know that meat came from animals and mm -hmm. you went to the store and bought like six pounds of beef that's just a neutral action because it wasn't deliberate just according to how it was formulated the premise mm -hmm. yeah so like on on our view even though he wasn't aware of it he's that action like still like ought not happen right it's something we just we prefer not prefer it not to happen right so i don't one think can, one could one can have the knowledge of the problem of their action without intending to like s support or bring into existence the problem like some someone could be aware that the animals are going to die for their steak but they can mm -hmm. go but i'm not intending i'm just intending to buy the steak like you know <laughs> and of course like we, yeah. it's obviously still wrong yeah i don't think it's a good like the premise is formulated very well like I know he's trying to steal men as best he can. And like, he's trying to put like, he's trying to make intention, like something that we should like factor in when it comes to like the acquisition of animal products. Mm -hmm. But I think we can all agree that like intention or not, we're like, we're going to evaluate the same and it's, it's wrong. Right. We right. may say, well, we may say that like, if a person has the intent to like harm the animal, we may evaluate the action, maybe a little bit more wrong because we'll, we'll take that intention into consideration. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um intention or not like the action is still bad right. right so i don't think that alleviates like um i don't think that makes the action permissible at the end of the day that's what i'm right yeah, yeah agreed but if we follow that silly view we come to some serious issues the first one is obvious if a vegan accidentally buys an animal product that vegan did something morally wrong and thus is morally blameworthy Beside that being so backwards, just imagine all of the implication of such a ridiculous view. Imagine I tricked them into buying an animal product. They had no intentions to do that. It was all my design. Well, that's irrelevant. They bought it, which means they did moral wrong. What if I steal their money and I buy animal products? Because intentions don't matter, it would be like they bought it. I mean, that would be their money. If I'm to brainwash and hypnotize them so they have no choice on the matter and then make them buy animal products, they would do something wrong. They had no intentions to do that. But who gives a shit? They did it. Thus, they did something wrong and should be held accountable. But that's not all. Because intentions are irrelevant, it's just things doing stuff. If wind, which has no intentions, would cause something they consider to be wrong, then wind would have done something morally wrong. Then that's ridiculous. Wind cannot do moral wrong and cannot be morally blameworthy. How about this? Imagine, I grow crops for food, but every time I do that, I sacrifice animals and splatter their blood on crops to appease gods, which would bless me with a good harvest. They don't know I'm doing that, which means if they buy plants from me, they're doing something wrong. What I'm doing and supporting it ought not to happen. So the action of buying plants from me, even if they know nothing about it, would be morally wrong. 
Imagine Jeff Bezos puts a condition on them and says that he would buy three animal products for every plant-based product they buy. Knowing that, would they do something wrong if they buy a plant-based product? It sure seems like it. They wouldn't intend that, but their purchase would make it happen. If they say Bezos is doing that and not them, then we can say the same for non-vegans. When we buy animal products, we are not the ones violating rights of animals. That's someone else. Then, their purchases of plant-based products can and very often will lead to non-vegans purchasing animal products. Vegans are well aware of that fact. They create profit for non-vegans, and non-vegans will do what non-vegans do, which is purchase of animal products. Because intentions don't matter, and consequences are what matters, then their purchases of plant-based products from non-vegans would be doing something wrong. They can't use the excuse of not having another choice because choice and intentions are irrelevant according to them. And now we come to this part in particular. We right. may say, well, we may say that, like, if a person has the intent to, like, harm the animal, we may evaluate the action maybe a little bit more wrong because we'll, we'll take that intention into consideration. In the two previous examples, vegans have knowledge that Bezos would abuse animals for every plant-based purchase they make. They also have knowledge if they create profits for people, those people will abuse animals. So it can be argued that they are intentionally doing things which harm animals and thus those actions, which are just buying plants, would be even more morally wrong. And do you know what's funny? They are trash with the ontologists. Purchase of animal products is so wrong that it will still be wrong even if you didn't intend to do it. But you see, doing the same thing, intentionally mind you, would be morally justified if that produces some desirable consequence. And if doing it intentionally is not just wrong, but more wrong, then how can it be morally justified at the same time? And then we have an issue we presented in the second chance veganism video. Imagine I'm a vegan and I unintentionally purchased an animal product. We ought not to do that, but I did. Now what? Am I no longer vegan? Or we can just ignore it. If ignore, then what if I do it 50 more times? If it is ignored even then, then what's the point of saying it's wrong when there is no consequence of any kind? And if my vegan card would be revoked just because I unintentionally purchased an animal product, then their veganism would be a joke, even to many other vegans. They have to bite so many bullets that it's not even funny anymore. It's just sad.